Hello and welcome back to this course. And as we are dealing with uh, neural network, today uh, we are going to see more background on the neural networks as well as uh, eventually we are going to see some basics of the so-called back propagation. Okay, so what we have seen so far, if you recall, uh, we know how a single feed forward uh, system works. And uh, by means of neural networks, you have come to know about the so-called uh, how you can express the neural network with matrix multiplication. So after expressing the system with matrix multiplication, uh, no matter what size of neural network you're dealing with, you can still express it easily. And more importantly, uh, some computer programming language understand matrix calculations. Uh, and recognizes the underlying calculations re related to that, whether it's uh, you're using MATLAB or Python, whatever the case, it's all easy for you to efficiently use it. But we haven't worked through feeding the signal through a network using matrix, uh, using matrix, especially with regards to three layers. We have seen a simple example with two layer system and uh, today's lecture, we will see examples with three layers because three layers are quite different. And I'll, I, will I will shortly tell you why it is so, why it is uh, significantly differs from that of a uh, two layer. Uh, basically, as you can see, the two layer, you have an input layer, you have an output layer, that's it, right? Right away, you get the results. But uh, when you have three layers, you have the input layer, you have so-called the hidden layer, and then you have an output layer. So the same process happens a little bit differently as you have this one added layer. Okay, let's directly jump in and see what's in for us today. You might recall this, this uh, example where we talked about uh, this system. Uh, architecture that uh, I introduced earlier once and we jumped on to the second I mean the two layer one and right now a simple one as you can see here layer one layer two layer three uh, they are nothing but you could call it as uh, the input layer as layer one the hidden layer as layer two and the output layer as layer three let's write it this way for example you can just say it as input, layer 1, hidden is your layer 2, and the output is your layer 3. Now uh, with this uh, thought in mind, uh, uh, let's, let's discuss further. Uh, you don't have to be worried about what is this hidden layer. It's simply called hidden because it's just inside uh, both the input and the output layer. Nothing special about it. It's just in the middle of these two layers, the input and the output layer. Now let's see some simple example like giving some numbers and let's see how it works. Uh, we have an input, so we are supposed to have three inputs. So let's uh, take the input as say 0.9, 0.1 and uh, we have 0.8 here okay and we can also give certain inputs uh, I mean the weights to the first input layer the input to the first layer that is the input layer is this three input is given point 0.9 point 0.1 and point s is given as the input and we do have weights which is not given as the input for the input layer whereas uh, the weights are going to the input of the hidden layer as well so it is going to the hidden layer, not to the input layer. So let's name some weights here for W11. Let's call it as uh, 0.9. And for W12, let's call it as 0.2. So likewise, let's uh, assign certain weights. And these weights, initially, we can have it as uh, random values. W two two as point eight. 
and uh, you can have further down you can also uh, consider other weights if you wish like the W33 in this case 0.9 from let me explain what is uh, happening here when you give these weights let's call it as uh, initially we have I vector that is the input vector which is equal to 0 0.9 Point 0.1 and point 0.8 right and let's uh, remember each node in this middle hidden layer is connected to every node in the input layer so that it gets some portion of the input signal and we also have certain uh, yeah some portion of input signal and also the hidden layer gets the weight as well so let's uh, write these weights in terms of uh, x weight times uh, the input i so let's write these in a matrix form so right now let's uh, consider the w matrix uh, nothing but the input uh, to the hidden layer these are the input to the hidden layers. The initially you have certain weights given as the input to the hidden layer. So let's take that as a matrix. Input to the hidden layer matrix. So let's call it as input head. So this is a matrix form where you have 0 0.9, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Anyway, these are the random values. So you have chosen certain values here let me explain one by one by now probably you might know how to identify each of those uh, values let me see here uh, first we have we can see the weight between the first input node to the first hidden node that is w11 which is 0.9 just as we have seen in the two layer network the same principle applies here so similarly you can guess what is going to be the next uh, values right similarly you can see that the weights for link between the second node of the input layer to the second node of the hidden layer what is the score that we and what is the values we have here it is 0.8 right second node of the input layer to the second node of the hidden layer that is w22 which is 0.8 so likewise we try to build the entire uh, system and uh, in this diagram i didn't show you all the weights uh, but in this matrix i have shown you all the weights so here uh, say for example w31 is 0.1 right w31 is 0.1 which is the third node in the input layer is going to the first node in the hidden layer that is 0.1 so with this thought in mind we are just building up this whole matrix of uh, input hidden matrix so at this point you might have also guessed there is another matrix might be present which will be of the matrix the weight matrix of weight between hidden and the output layer right now what you are seeing is the weight matrix of between uh, input and hidden layer so like, that's why uh, we have given few uh, values here let me give more values uh, if you wish you can uh, verify or you can check it out let's say w3 2 equals 0.2 and w23 equals 0.1 and w22 equals 0.5 remember this w22 is different this w22 is like the second node of hidden layer going to the second layer second node of the output layer right so this belong to that matrix so we have shown only i have shown only one matrix here we will consider that uh, matrix as well.
So this is the matrix for input and hidden. Let's have another matrix between hidden and output. Okay, these random values are given as the weight matrix for weights between the hidden layer and the output layer. So with this uh, thought in mind, you can uh, now think about working out some combined moderated input to the hidden layer. So the moderated input, they are the weights, right? So we should also give uh, descriptive names uh, to identify what is what in the middle layer as well as in the final layer because the hidden layer is I mean the input layer is just the input it is getting so generally speaking uh, what we have here is like uh, we can say x hidden equals w of uh, the input times i. So x hidden equals the input hidden times i. So the input hidden is nothing but this one, this matrix, right? So we'll take this matrix, which is a point 9.3.4.2.8.2.1.5.6 with the input input we already know it is 0 0.9 0 0.1 and 0 0.8 right so with this now we can uh, get what as hidden equals when you multiply this matrix multiplication you already know what is a matrix multiplication you will be getting the answer something like 1.16 and 0.42 and 0.62 so these are the simple things of course you can do this by means of certain computer program. So now we have got the moderated combined values of uh, the hidden middle or hidden layers. And that is point, I mean 1.16, 0.42, So we can use uh, simple values uh, to identify how we did this. Let's uh, consider here now we initially started with the input as 0 0.9, 0 0.1 and 0 0.8. We heard certain weights. When we combined these two, the input and the weights, we got the exact input that is going into the hidden layer. Got it? So these are the things that are fed into the hidden layer. Let's take this and let's uh, perform further. So now you got this but there, there is one more thing still remaining. So we know that uh, the output of what would be the output of the hidden layer? If you recall, we always uh, do or we make sure that it goes to a certain threshold in the previous uh, previous lectures, right? So that uh, we call it as the hidden, I mean uh, the sigmoid function or the sigmoid value. So the output, the so-called output of this hidden layer is nothing but the sigmoid of x hidden. So here sigmoid is applied to each element in the x hidden and you try to produce this matrix output of hidden layer. That's what you're trying to do. 
So let's see what is going to happen here. So what we have here is uh, simply we have, let me put it here so that you can, let me put it this way here. Output of hidden layer is sigmoid of 1.16. Point four two, point six two, and when you take the sigmoid value, you know how to take that value, right? You just have to use this form, and when you put the x value as one point one six, it's like a e power minus one point one six. So that's around like we have 0.3135. So you can use y equals 1 by 1 plus 0.3135. That will give you 0.7651. Right? So that's it. We now got this particular value you can see the value is between 0 and 1 and because this is a sigmoid function it does not produce uh, any values that is outside this range that's the threshold property that we have and you can also if you want to check you can look back the logistic function graph you will be seeing it again so we are just uh, seeing out how things are working out for the output of the middle layer or a hidden layer now let's going to see how it appears to be for each and everything you are going to do this so right now i took the x as 1.16 and you can take x as 0.42 you can take x as 0.62 based on that you can find what is the given values so let's uh, see what happens now if you have these two layers now okay just stop for a while and think again what is happening or what we have done here. So we have given certain inputs and we got the outputs here. Output is 0 0.761, 0 0.603, 0 0.650. You got you got it, how we got these outputs of the hidden layer or the middle layer the same thought with the same thought you can also go ahead and you can do for any number of uh, layers at this point of time we just have three nodes and three layers for each nodes and it's quite uh, understandable for us to work out uh, these moderating signal just by manually calculating you can do it but in generally speaking uh, practically at times we do have like uh, many layers maybe 53 layers or like even 100 or 103 layers so that time maybe you have to use the computers to help out with your calculations well uh, how about this uh, final output layer what is the property here what is the input that is you are giving to this output layer and what is the output of this output layer so that's another question right we still go for a similar thought where x equals w time i and we know that uh, the x output equals w of output times output of hidden output of hidden let me write it so that is the output of hidden if you want to verify okay So let's uh, 
see what is happening here. So we already know what is this one. I just want to clarify this. Let me put it clearly so that you don't get confused. So what we have here is what we have here is the x x hidden output times we are multiplying this here with the output of the hidden output of the hidden layer so what is this one here that is nothing but here we saw hit weights of the weights between that is uh, given to the output layer that is between hidden and output layer we have a certain weights so we are going to take that matrix and you are going to use it let's see how it is done we are going to have the output equals 0 0.3 this 0.3 that's output we have point oops So this is the same matrix we initially had and your uh, new input is okay so that is your output of the hidden layer right which acts as the input to the actual input we are want to multiply this two that will act as an input to the output layer so here it's out when you multiply these two things you get 0 0.975 0 0.888 and 1.254 okay you got it so you can uh, simply see what is happening with respect to this and based on that you can see the actual values now we can try to find what is the exact uh, diagram you can see input is there and input to the hidden layer you found out how you found out after multiplying the weights and the input and then taking the certain uh, values you uh, then multiplying that you got the input to the hidden layers and the output you got after having the uh, certain sigmoid values right and again for the input to this one you can find it similarly if you get the output of uh, so output equals sigmoid of uh,
So when you take this, this is going to be your actual output. Output of the output layer. 0 0.726, 0 0.708, 0 0.708, and going to be 0 0.778. So until you got the, you got it clearly how we got each input and each output of each layer. So eventually this is what you're going to get. Output is going to be 0 0.726, 0 0.708, 0.778. So this is an important part. We in fact had an input and after stages of calculations you arrived at an output. So our output is clear. We have successfully got this output. And what is next? That's very important. The next step is to use the output from this neural network and you have to compare it with the training examples to work out what is the error that you have. So we need to use the error to refine the neural network and refine it further until you improve the output. Right now we got an output, uh, we are not sure how good this output is. So you have to compare this output with the training examples and you have to see and work out the errors. So we have to use this error to refine the entire neural networks itself, you have to refine itself to improve or to have a better output. So that's where the actual uh, process of learning comes in, right? Uh, we talked about uh, learning from weights. So learning from weights is more than just uh, one node. We have, uh, it's not just tuning in the weights of only one node. We have to do it for multiple nodes. If you recall from the first two lectures, uh, we talked about a simple linear classifier and we try to adjust the slope and some of the parameters of the nodes of linear functions so that we can try to predict things, right? So we, in fact, uh, if you recall, we just use the error and then we try to find the differences, we try to minimize the differences and we try to produce a better answer. So same thought or same idea we are going to use. We are going to use the difference between the node produced an answer and the whatever the answer is produced by the node, you are going to see the difference and try to improve it and finally you are going to refine it. So this uh, whole process, in fact we are finding the relationship between the error and the slope adjustment was very simple in case of a linear classifier. But here it might be, it looks maybe a little bit complicated, but not so. If you look closely, uh, we have to update the weights. That's it. We have to update the weights. Right now what we had is we just had one flow, one iteration, or in other words, we just went one flow. We had it and we got the output. Use this output and we have to refine this output. We have to update some weights and you have to go through the second process and check the output again. So that's the actual uh, process that we are going to see. We have to update the link weights and when more, when more than one node needs uh, to contribute to the output, we have to make sure that we have to adjust, this, adjust accordingly. So to adjust this uh, whole stuff, we have a certain uh, problem or complications. Of course, the problem is also very simple. Here it is. So for example, uh, if you look at this here, uh, we can see we just had one node feeding to the output uh, generally, like even the linear classifier or other places, we just have only one node, right? But when you have two nodes, which means that two nodes are contributing to the output of the uh, output error, like, or in other words, output functions. Uh, two nodes are contributing to the output. In other words, if there is an error in the output, which means that the two nodes have contributed to this error. So what is the point in just updating only one weight? Yeah, because uh, we are ignoring the other nodes, right? So it is essential for us 
to make sure that the errors are because of more than one link, which means that there should be a need for us to adjust both the node weights so that we get we can correct this particular error. We can minimize this error. So if you want to change the weight, uh, do it accordingly for the previous uh, nodes uh, based on your output. So how we are going to do it? How we are going to do it? We got the output, we got the error. Now what we are going to do? So one uh, typical or traditional way to do it is that to split the error equally amongst the contributing node. So we have an output error here and uh, we know that this node 1 and node, node 2 is contributing to this error. So now we are going to split equally the errors that has been contributed to this uh, nodes. So one way to do that is uh, just simply you can split by having half the error given here, half the error given here. Yeah, this is one of the, again, traditional way. So this is one of the way to split the errors between them. Or uh, if you, because these weights that we have used earlier, it's already known, right? So based on the weights, again, we can try to split. We can use another idea to split uh, based upon the contributions by the two weights. Say, for example, uh, you can always go for, uh, in this case, W11 is 3.0 and W21 is 1.0. Zero. The two nodes are contributing signals to the output node, uh, which means that one of them is three times more than the other one, right? So if you split the error proportionately based on the weights, then it is also more reasonable. You might update the weights accordingly. So another way to do that is you can go by say this is three fourth of the error and this is uh, one fourth of the error we're talking about error error correction right so the contribution of error by w11 is three fourth and contribution of the error for w12 is one fourth among them so we can split accordingly so if you have 100 nodes uh, at the output node we have to split the error for 100 connections node to the by means of kind of proportions you can split accordingly and proportionately you can uh, share with all the link nodes to the to make sure that you get the error shared by all the link nodes because we have to understand that all the link nodes are contributing the error so that's why we want to share with all the link nodes so we can wait, so we can simply use, use these kind of weights in several ways. Uh, first we can, we can actually propagate the weight signal forwards from the input to the output. That is like a kind of feed forward, right? You are having the, in, you are having the input and you are giving certain weights. In fact, you are, if our weights are not correct, and if in fact our weights are not correct, and then you are going to propagate this error towards the output. So, uh, that's happening. So what we are doing, uh, what we can also plan to do is that we can use the weight to propagate the error backwards. We can propagate the error backwards from the output. So since uh, we are talking about propagating the error backwards from the output, at times this is called uh, the back propagation. It's a simple back propagation model. So let's uh, discuss uh, a little bit about what is this back propagation model. Uh, as usual, let's start by considering a two layer, two input system, which is a little bit easier for us to understand. So here is a system, two layer, two input system. So both nodes, both output nodes uh, can have error, right, at times. In this case, we have two output nodes and two output nodes have error have errors 
and in fact it is extremely likely that we haven't uh, trained the network initially uh, we have to train the system until you minimize the error but it initially when you have input when you're done with the first flow it is most likely that you have errors and we haven't trained the system so we can see that both of these error needs to be refined in this case we call it as e1 and e2 e1 and e2 both have to be refined for the internal link weights in the network which we call it as w1 w21 w1 to w11 right we have to make sure this has to be changed so we can use a simple approach to how we can split the output node error amongst the contributing nodes the contributing nodes or contributing links uh, so that we can in fact uh, proportionate or equally partition and proportion the errors uh, based on the weights we have the fact that we have more uh, than one node uh, doesn't really change anything actually simply you have to repeat the output node uh, that we already did for the first one so we have to do the same for the second output node as well okay let's uh, uh, let's think about this uh, for a while and let's see how it can be done so actually there is no dependency between the two sets of uh, links that you have so now we'll talk in terms of uh, e1 and e2 because we talk about error right so since we talk about error uh, let's try to uh, think about the actual output is there that is o1 and o2 so remember that the uh, difference between the desired output provided by the training data okay let's uh, we have another term uh, t1 which is the training data t1 okay suppose uh, remember that the difference between the desired output you have a desired output uh, provided by the training data t1 t1 is the desired output provided by the training data and the actual output what you get is o1 for the output one okay actual things and here e1 is nothing but t1 minus o1 got it so the same thing applies for e2 you can think like based on this you can build up the whole system the error at the out at the second output node we are labeling as e2 we can see from the simple diagram here the e1 you can actually split into proportions to the connected links so what is connected to this uh, output node one which is here yeah so we can see w11 w12 is connected so for us this e1 is splitting into proportion to this connecting links so we have this weight w11 w21 likewise for e2 you can split proportionately to the weights w12 and w11 so let's uh, sim do a simple calculation and see how this can be done this is w22 i suppose yeah this is w22 okay so let's try to see and uh, let's try to split uh, this error let's uh, begin by for e1 let's see simple updates for e1 okay let us consider e1 equals uh, w11 by w11 plus w21 so here the fraction of e1 used to refine w21 so fraction of e1 is being used to uh, refine w21 also you can consider this as uh, w21 by w11 plus w21 so these fractions might be initially don't get confused with this uh, 
fractions. Let us uh, try to understand what these fractions really means. Because we are splitting E1 into more proportionate, so proportionate way for these weights, we ought to see uh, which weight is larger or which weight is smaller. If you recall here, we know that uh, W11 is more and W21 is less. So accordingly, you have to uh, split up things. So with this thought in mind, uh, if W11, consider that if W11 is uh, twice as large as W21, if W11 is twice larger as W22, say for example, if W11 is 6 and if W21 is uh, say 3, so W11 is twice the size of W21, then the fraction of E1 is nothing but E1 is 6 by 6 plus 3, which is 2 by 3. So that's, uh, that leaves 1 by 3 of E1 for other smaller weight W21. So we are checking, in fact, uh, what we are doing here is we are checking the proportionate system for W11 here for updating W11 so that uh, which which leaves W21 to be 1 by 3 so one fraction W11 gets two thirds of the fraction W21 gets one third of the fraction so that is the key idea here so with the same expression if you want to use for W21 it's like uh, 3 by 6 plus 3 that is 3 by 9 which is 1 by 3 that's what we have got here and that's the actual thing this is for a proportionate system so understand this whole thing is for the sake of W11 and uh, W21 right so if uh, the weights are equal some might wonder what if the weights are equal you can also check it out uh, what happens if the weight of weights are equal just for example if W11 is uh, 4 and W21 is 4 then what happens it's like 4 by 4 plus 4 which is 1 by 2 so both are equally partitioned or in other words both gets equal share so at this uh, point of time you can just uh, think again for a while uh, sit back and relax and think uh, how this error is guiding us in refining some parameters inside the network right actually these error is guiding us to refine some parameters inside the network so in this case we are refining the weights we are trying to refine the weights so we haven't done uh, or we don't know how it is done with the link weights with the moderated uh, output layers that we are going to see how it happens we are going to see how it actually what effects it's going to have on the neural networks so we have seen uh, that it's kind of complication when there is more than one output node. So in this case, we have two output nodes. So we do have some complications. But we just uh, did this example. Like we just saw for E1 and E2 how we can do it. The same principle applies for E2 as well. I have given an example for E1 for W11, W21. The same thing you can try for the other two inputs w12 and w22 well so far uh, things are getting uh, in order and with this uh, thought in mind actually we can uh, think about actually how we can back propagate the entire system uh, what happens next so we have to consider it uh, because at this point of time you know how things are working out for just uh, two layers so if there is three layers how are we going to in fact uh, the pro back propagate these errors 
and that's uh, kind of a challenging thing because at that time you have a hidden layer okay let's uh, consider some points on that as well so let's try to work uh, back or backwards let's consider this back propagation error here so working back from the final output at the right hand side here you have the final output uh, we can see that we can use the error at the output so e out we can call it as the error at the output we can call e out and the, from there the weights of the links between hidden and the output layer the weights between hidden and the output layer we can call it as w h o that's where it is actually giving us here we worked out some specific errors associated with each link by splitting we are splitting the weights in proportion to the size of the weight themselves if the weight is more then we can give more propor proportions to that so let's uh, try to see the uh, whole thing uh, one by one and see how we can uh, handle this part well so we simply take these errors first and associate with the output and the hidden layer so we have uh, e hidden we have uh, something called hidden right initially we, we know that there is an error at the output and that has been caused by the weights between the hidden and the output and we do know that uh, the errors associated with the output of hidden layer we call it as e hidden again we can split those again into proportionate degrees based on the links of the preceding uh, layers in this case the preceding layers is the link between input and the hidden layer so for the input and hidden layer we can call it as uh, say w i h input and the hidden layer so that's the basic uh, things we are discussing here so we had even uh, if you have more layers then you have to do it repeatedly in order to add these information until you go from the output layer to the input layer the flow of error or flow of error information uh, from the output layer you are shifting it to the hidden layer hidden layer to the input layer so this form of propagation we call it as the back propagation so we first use the error at the output of the output layer node e output in this case so what error do we f do we use for the hidden layer here we for come to form that e hidden is the hidden layer input so based on this uh, we know that from feed forwarding the input signal uh, each node in the hidden layer does indeed have an output for example you know that hidden layer also has an output signal so based on this uh, you also remember the activation function that is applied uh, in our example like we use the sigmoid activation function that based on the weight su weighted sum and then you are going to uh, hold the whole process happening so you might wonder like we can't exactly find the error because we are using the activation function is applied to the weighted sum of inputs at the nodes right you got my point i mean we are talking about error propagations uh, initially what we had is we we were having feed forward where you take the input and input is given to the out, uh, hidden layer in in that time what we did is like uh, we do had the summation of the weights and after the sigmoid function you got the output so this output has some error which means that it is not just the weights it also a function uh, activation function has been used so we don't have to target a desired uh, output for each layer at this point of times so we will only have to target the values for final output layer so that is our main target so let's try to understand the final output layer 
we have an output and we are going to compare that output with the training example. So we are going to compare that output with the training example like in this case T1 we saw, right? So that should be our target. So uh, let's uh, check, uh, check this out again like you can see. Uh, you can also consider there is another output here, right? So Z output say we'll call it as two, E output one, and hidden output one, you can call it as one. Okay. So let's uh, try to understand how this is whole thing is happening. So the first node in the hidden layer has two links emerging from it and connect to the two output layers. Right? The first node in the hidden layer has two links that connects to both output uh, layers. Yes, uh, just, just the same thing we did before. And we know that we can split the output error along each of these links that is given as the input. So this means that we have some kind of error uh, at each of the two links that emerges from the hidden or the middle layer. So we could uh, recombine these links errors to form the error of the particular node as the best approach uh, we can do that. But we don't actually have a target values in the middle layer. That's the problem, right? In the middle layer, we don't know exact target values or we don't know exactly, we are not comparing with the training examples. We don't know exactly what is happening. Only we can compare it at the output, at the output, uh, layer you can actually compare and then you can see okay we have some difference with the training example so we have to change so that's uh, another issue that we have to understand so we combine these two links error to form error at a node for that particular node uh, that can be uh, done but as i told you we don't actually have a target values of the middle layer so that's an issue at any point of times so we can uh, see more clearly what is uh, actually happening but let's go through it again to make sure everything is correct. Like uh, we need an error for hidden layer nodes so that we can use it to update the preceding layer, right? So we can call this error at the hidden layer as uh, E hidden, but we don't have any obvious answer to what actually this value is right now okay so we can't say error is difference between the desired target output from those nodes and the actual outputs because our training data examples only give us the targets for the final output node for the time being for the hidden layer we don't have actually we don't know what is it actually we don't know what uh, how we are going to find this error value Okay, so training data examples only tell us uh, what output from very final node should be and based on that uh, we can do certain process but they don't tell us what the output node of uh, output nodes in any other layers. Whatever layers you have uh, inside we don't know exactly what is uh, going to be the what is the desired output of that layer. We don't know exactly what is the desired output of the hidden layer. So this is the most uh, difficult part I would say. So we could recombine the split errors from the link using error back propagation uh, which we uh, do which we have which I have explained earlier. So the errors in the first uh, hidden node is the sum of split errors in all links connecting forward from the same node. Right? So in the in this particular uh, process we can have a fraction of output error we are taking the fraction of output error we did that here we did the fraction of output errors we've been taken say for example we do take the fractions say e output one Let 
simulate it fully what we can do is like uh, we are we want to know what is uh, the hidden error or the hidden layer right so e hidden one equals sum of split errors on links of uh, w11 and uh, w12 right so this is nothing but e output e output 1 times w11 by w11 plus w21 plus e output e output 2 times w12 by w12 plus w22 so this can uh, help us to clearly see this is very important part as we have seen here so two things so e hidden one is nothing but the sum of split errors on links here w11 and uh, w12 so let us uh, consider this again here what is happening so if you follow follow along uh, one error one error at a time you will be able to get the whole uh, picture so let's uh, consider here so you see that uh, the error 0.5 at the second output that is the output a uh, final output in this case a uh, final second output uh, layer node we are actually splitting this error 0.5 is the error we are splitting this error into two that is 0.1 and 0.4 right we are splitting into 0.1 and 0.4 you know why we are splitting as 0.1 and 0.4 at this point you write away you, you can get it because w12 is 4.0 and w11 uh, okay w12 is uh, 1.0 w22 is 4.0 so that is w22 here you can understand so you can also see that uh, when you recombine the second hidden layer with the sum of uh, connected split layers between 0 0.9 and 0 0.4 that gives you 1.3 uh, so in this case uh, you can also understand how things are working out uh, along the along the whole process so error 1 and error 2 you are splitting and back propagating this error to the hidden layer and now we are trying to again find uh, these values for the hidden layers so likewise you can still back propagate things uh, further down actually so when i say back propagate further further down you can actually do the whole process here so if you try to do this manipulation you will find uh, how things can be split that's point four two point two eight point one six two five this is one point one three seven five they're actually splitting up that's it and uh, you can see the values here of uh, w11 is 3.0 w12 is 
1.0 W21 is 2.0 W22 is 7.0 and finally you can also see what is the error E1 at the input layer 0.5825 E2 E2 at the input layer is 1.4175 so with the same uh, thought you can actually perform various uh, calculations. So what we did today so far is about, uh, we learned about how to refine the link weights and we are trying to guide the errors, the difference between the right answer given to us by the training data uh, and the actual output. We try to find the difference and based on that you are trying to minimize it. So error at the output nodes is simply the difference between the desired and the actual output. So error associated with the internal load is not right away obvious, you cannot clearly see it. So one of the traditional method that we apply is to split the errors into proportions uh, to size of the connected links and the weights. Then you recombine these bits at each internal nodes and you can try to uh, propagate this error backwards. The same thing can be applied uh, in various other ways as well. So let us uh, do certain vectorization of this error. Uh, we can actually cause a simple matrix multiplication to simplify this entire task. So we are talking about E1 and E2 and let's uh, try to see how this can be applied. So with respect to that, uh, let's uh, say error at the output as a vector E1 and E2 and uh, so next we want to construct this matrix for a hidden layer this is for the error at the output right so we want to know what is the error at the hidden what is this so little, this might, as I told you, this is a little, little bit uh, not very obvious. The first bit is the no first node in the hidden layer uh, has certain values and this node takes certain weights and then it's actually propagating certain errors to the output nodes. So we are trying to use all its features of uh, output errors. So you can have the matrix in this form E11 times W11 plus E2 times W22 and uh, E1 that's actually E1 E1 times W21 plus E2 times W yeah so the output error E1 times W11 and uh, output error E2 times W uh, actually W12 that is again I made a mistake Then uh, for the second path that contributes to the error is for the second path you have E1 times W21 plus E2 times uh, W22. So you can spot this matrix uh, whole process. In fact, you can write it this way. Error for hidden. is nothing but uh, this weight W11 W12 W21 W22 
times uh, E1 and E2. So that's the idea here. Uh, we have done uh, so much uh, simple. This weighted matrix is like the one we have constructed earlier, a similar matrix. If you take the transpose of this matrix, that is W of uh, T, we can actually see how this whole process can be uh, easily manipulated. transpose of hidden and output because these weights are between hidden layer and the output layer times the error at the output. So if you like to uh, see what is this uh, actual process happening, actually we are trying to propagate this error uh, slowly one step at a time. So the back propagation error can be expressed, expressed by means of simple matrix multiplication. So this, uh, what is the advantage of this is because it's, it can express very precise and concisely uh, irrespective of any network size. So it, it can allows, uh, allow us to express it in any programming languages very easily because may, most of the things, programming languages these days you can express the matrix more easily and it can actually deserves us to have a better understanding of the entire system. So that's all we have so far. We have understood uh, how weights are working and how uh, back propagation is working. We are getting into deeper into this understanding of the actual process and I like to stop here and when we come back we will uh, get down deep into other aspects like at this point of time we are already started to talk about errors, right? So uh, mathematical version uh, of this uh, understanding this error is called the gradient descent. So we will talk about the so-called gradient descent uh, approach uh, in our next lecture, lecture and then we will also consider few more aspects of how we have to evaluate the system. So I will stop here and we will catch up uh, on further notes in the next lecture.